this is Greg from SharePoint Maven and today I would like to explain to you the difference between SharePoint and Microsoft Teams. Um, now I notice there is a lot of confusion out there as to what SharePoint is, what Teams is, whether Teams is SharePoint or replacement for SharePoint. So with this video I would like um, to, to answer all those questions. Uh, I will start with SharePoint first and explain to you what SharePoint is. And then, by the way, I do have kind of similar videos on my YouTube channel where I explain the difference between uh, SharePoint and OneDrive, SharePoint and Office 365. Um, and today, of course, I will explain to you what the difference between SharePoint and, and Teams. So let me let me first give you a brief overview of what and remind you what SharePoint is. I mean, essentially, SharePoint is a it's a Microsoft application that existed for 18 years now and it has gone of course through multiple revisions over the years and especially over the last several years has changed drastically uh, Microsoft uh, really did wonderful things to um, you know to SharePoint app and made it uh, really attractive and sexy and and um, you know with the modern tools you know that uh, with the modern tools that we now have in web parts uh, within SharePoint uh, but essentially, SharePoint is a, is a collaboration platform, all right? It's a collaboration platform that historically has been used by organizations to collaborate, uh, well, internally and externally. And what you see uh, right now on your screens, uh, it, it's essentially, it's an example of a, a company internet built in SharePoint. So as you can see, um, this is a landing page, you know, the main site, if you will, and then, you know, typically, all right, uh, whether you are in a small organization, a large organization, doesn't really matter. You would just have lots of sites. Uh, of course, the larger the organization, the more sites uh, you will have. So, you know, here is just an example of a um, sales department site built in SharePoint, uh, right? Well, this is where a sales department can, um, you can, of course, you know, collaborate. Um, uh, you know, here is an example of a chart site. And once again, you know, all these things I'm showing you, this is still SharePoint, all right? So here is an HR employee site where employees can go and access the information, um, you know, the forms and policies, etc., and so on. Typically, you would have lots of sites, you know, project sites, you know, department sites, team sites, etc., etc. Now, uh, for the most part, though, SharePoint, I mean, SharePoint is great. Um, you know, for, for, you know, in, in terms of storage of content uh, and primarily document management. Uh, in my opinion, you know, SharePoint has some excellent document management features and capabilities with co-authoring and check and check out and you know, and version history, etc. Uh, but you know, at the end of the day, SharePoint is more of a static repository, if you will. All right, um, there is not. You know, if you want to, it's it's definitely not Twitter, it's definitely not Facebook or LinkedIn. So if you want to organize your documents in a document library and collaborate with your, you know, with your users internally or externally, I mean, it's a wonderful tool. But at the same time, if you want some of the social collaboration that you typically expect these days, right, with Facebook and popularity of all the social media tools like Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn, uh, we, we, you know, SharePoint does not have those features, all right? So if you want to maybe uh, chat to someone or comment, you know, on, on, on you know, certain, you know, piece of content, there is just no such capability, all right? And historically, historically, um, you know, Microsoft tried a few things. Uh, what you see um, in, in terms of social collaboration and try to make it a little bit more exciting. What you see right now on the screen, uh, folks, is an example of a, what we now call classic SharePoint. We really do not build SharePoint sites uh, with this classic look and feel anymore. We only build it using the modern look and feel. Uh, but the reason I'm showing this to you is because, um, because at some point Microsoft tried to, to make SharePoint uh, a little bit more exciting in terms of um, I guess all these different social collaboration tools. So there has been this newsfeed web part, um, you know, available at one point. Uh, then there was also a discussion board where you could have, um, you know, forums, you know, style discussions, and you know, people could, you know, create uh, different threads and topics and you know, comment on them, etc. Uh, but at the end of the day, they, you know, while these apps existed, you know, they were really they always lagged behind in terms of um, the excitement, I guess, factor 
uh, you know, that you typically expect with modern um, social media tools out there right now. So, <coughs> so this has changed um, just a couple of years ago uh, with the introduction of uh, Microsoft Teams. And essentially what Microsoft Teams is, it's a social, it's a, it's a chat-based collaboration tool, all right? Uh, and how do you access Teams? Um, your Teams is part of Office 365 subscription. And by the way, if you are interested to learn more about what the difference between SharePoint and Office 365, I do have a video on that topic uh, on my YouTube channel. But Teams, you know, just like SharePoint and all the other you know, applications, right? They're just part of your Office 365 subscription. So let me click on Teams now. And this is what it looks like. Now, what Teams is really, it's 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 a chat-based uh, communication tool. Think of it as, a, as an alternative or even a replacement for email, right? The idea is that um, you know, it pretty much looks and feels and works almost like, um, you know, Twitter or Facebook, right, where it's persistent chat. And, um, you know, there are no, unlike email where, you know, you send an email and people reply to all and then they bring other people into the email mix, right? You know, this is pretty much one consistent thread of, um, of um, you know, information. All right. Now, but Teams doesn't just exist. You know, here's where the confusion comes in, you know, between Teams and, and SharePoint. Uh, Teams doesn't just exist in space. It is actually tightly integrated with SharePoint. And uh, it is integrated through something called Office 365 Groups. And let me explain what I mean by that. And once again, by the way, I do have a separate video on my on my YouTube channel explaining the whole concept of Office 365 groups. But essentially, here's the deal. When you create just a regular SharePoint site, all you have is just a regular SharePoint site, all right? When you create a team, it does create a team, but it actually, first and foremost, it creates, it creates an Office 365 group. And just a little bit of refresher, an Office 365 group is a security, it's a membership, it's a, it's a security slash membership group that is tied into many other, you know, uh, different apps available as part of your Office 365 subscription. So when you create a team, all right, so we're going to create a team right now. When you create a team, what happens is it creates behind the scenes an Office 365 group, which is a membership group. It does create a team, but it also creates other apps and other components of an Office 365 group. So you also get uh, a distribution list uh, in, uh, you know, in Outlook, you know, for, for your for your group. You also get an Outlook-based calendar. You get a SharePoint site, a separate SharePoint site for the team, for the group. And you also get Planner tool for task management. All right. So when you, as you, so now when you collaborate really with your team members uh, and, you know, chat with them using Teams. But these are the same members, you know, right? These are the same members who, you know, of the team who have access to everything else that this Office 365 group has to offer, you know. So all the members who have access to your team, they also have access to your SharePoint site, your planner tool, your distribution list, your Outlook calendar, right? So let's go ahead and uh, create a new team. Uh, and and by the way, so the way it works when you create a, an Office 365 group um, through Outlook or maybe some other means, it does not create uh, a team, all right? You actually have to connect it uh, separately later. But when you create a team, it actually creates a team and an Office 365 group. So let's go ahead and uh, create a new team. And <coughs> And as you can see here, this is exactly what I just said. Uh, you, you know, we can either uh, connect our, you know, a, a team to an existing group I created, you know, previously, or we can create one from scratch. So I'm going to create one from from scratch. And these are the three different security levels, if you will, or types of teams. Um, and this org-wide team, this is a recent addition, 
uh, you know, by Microsoft, essentially, this is like a, a whole company, um, you know, team, if you will. Uh, probably will, there will, might be rare cases when you might want to use this one. But the, these two choices, private and public, these are the exact same choices you have to make when you create a regular an Office 365 group. Remember, if you create an Office 365 group from, you, you know, a SharePoint homepage or, or, or your Outlook, right, it also asks you to, um, you know, about, um, you know, the security level, and it also gives you a choice of private or public. And, of course, I mean, the only difference between the two is that public is really, it's almost like free lunch for everyone. Everyone can join and, and uh, you know, add, add a delete stuff in that, um, you know, group or team. And private, is, it means that it's permission-based. And I think for majority of, of teams and groups we will be setting up, I think, you know, right, you will obviously be setting up private, you know, groups. I really don't see a lot of use cases for those, you know, in my opinion. Um, you know, you always wanted to be based on membership, right? A certain group of people, um, you know, to, to, to have access uh, to a particular, uh, you know, team or SharePoint site or a group. All right, so let's go ahead and, and set up a private team. So this is where, of course, we, um, we, we, we give it a name. Uh, let's just say that um, it is going to be um, SharePoint uh implementation project all right i'm going to I just want to make sure i spell it right all right here we go um and of course you can provide a description um for 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 your little team that you're setting setting up i'm going to skip this uh, you know step hit create and let's see what happens excellent i guess nice work we we did good all right perfect we can actually add team members to our uh, team right now. Uh, we can also do it later, by the way. You know, we might as well. Let's add Mary to our team. Here we go. And yeah. And by the way, right, I can also upgrade Mary to be the owner. Uh, so the difference between an owner and the, and, 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 the, and the member is that, you know, member members are just members and owners can actually invite others. All right. Um, so that's the difference. All right. Perfect. Let's finish this up. Perfect. So as you can see now, uh, it did create a team, you know, for me, SharePoint implementation, and it created what, you know, what's called a, a, a channel. Essentially, by default, every team has at least one channel. A channel is just a way to, uh, to kind of separate conversations, um, you know, within the team. I think I have some, you know, as you can see here, some of my other teams, they have different channels. This is just a way to separate uh, kind of conversations, uh, different threads, if you will. But what I want to show you here is, so first of all, of course, we can now chat with, you know, our team and collaborate and send files. And, you know, there are all these different things. You can send them smiley faces, pictures. You can, you know, start a, a Skype, you know, video, right? Um, or, 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 and right now it's actually called, I think, Teams, Microsoft Teams video, right? Because Skype has been integrated with Microsoft Teams. In any case, that's not, not what I want to show you here. What I want to show you is that is that we now, um, you know, did not just create a team. We created something more than just a team. We created a team that is connected to an Office 365 group. And to prove that point, as you can see here, so um, I can, I, I would like to open this, you know, document library in SharePoint. Look at this, look at this. Um, it obviously, because I, I did it through, you know, I opened this library, through, uh, you know, from my general channel, right? Uh, it actually brought me over to a SharePoint site that is associated, you know, with my team. And it actually brought me directly into the folder for my channel. Uh, so the way it works is, folks, is that you see as part of a SharePoint site. And by the way, let me let me just show you what the SharePoint site looks like. It's a it's a regular SharePoint site that is part of the you know Office 365 group, right? So look at this. We got. A, remember how I said we when you create a team, it creates all this other stuff like planner and site and and SharePoint site, etc. This is it. This is a SharePoint site collection that has been set up by an Office 365 group when I created a team. And remember when I, 
you know, click this open in SharePoint, you know, button, right? It brought me over directly to the document library. And the way it works, folks, is that <clears throat> you essentially, you have a document library that is a standard library as part of uh, each and every, uh, you know, SharePoint site. But also, every channel, every channel within the, um, you know, my Microsoft team gets uh, pretty much a folder. All right. So as you collaborate, uh, you know, uh, in your teams, in your channels, all the information is stored inside of the, you know, folders. I mean, by information, I mean the, the files and, and, you know, and, and, you know, essentially the documents that you collaborate on. So if I were to create another channel, let's just say I want to create a channel for uh, my, you know, management team. All right. Here we go. Guess what will happen in SharePoint? When I reload this, well, even before I could hit a reload button, <coughs> um, apologies for this, um, it, you know, it, it created a folder for me. So essentially each channel gets a folder and as you, you know, exchange information uh, within the, uh, within the, um, you know, your channels, uh, the essentially the files are stored uh, in those respective folders. As of record, as of this recording, um, I know it's a common request out there, but as of this recording, there is no security, um, you know, unique security for different channels. Channels are just different threads, if you will, uh, different threads within the forum, right? Uh, you know, everyone can see everything and participate in any channel, uh, you know, same with folders. I mean, it's pretty much wide open to everyone, all right? But now, so once again, when we created a team, it created an Office 365 group, which in turn created a SharePoint site and all the other bells and whistles that you get as part of an Office 365 group. And let me show you all these other bells and whistles. Um, if I click on conversations, this is the, you know, the, you know, essentially the inbox, if you will, uh, the conversation tab for this particular, uh, for this particular Office 365 group for this particular team. And once again, so this is the uh, distribution list with the, of course, as I said, right, we, we, we you know, we essentially got uh, a distribution list with an email address for this particular, uh, for this particular, um, um, you know, for this particular uh, team. Uh, and of course, we got an Outlook based calendar that is part of the group. All right. And we also got uh, as part of the uh, as part of the Office 365 group, of course, we got a SharePoint site, which I showed you already. But let me uh, just show it to you again. And as part of uh, the same Office 365 group, we also get Planner tool, which is uh, a task management tool. So you see, once again, essentially, uh, essentially. Um, we when when someone creates a team when someone creates a team and you know just you know you know in, in case if they want to collaborate and chat with you know their team members once again it doesn't just create a team very very important thing to remember it creates all the other tools that are tightly integrated amongst you know themselves um you know as when you create a team once again you get uh, an outlook uh, email distribution list, you get an Outlook calendar, you get a SharePoint site, um, you also get, uh, a, a, you know, a planner tool, and of course you get the, the team for collaboration. So hopefully, you know, this um, uh, this video explained to you the difference between an, uh, between uh, SharePoint and uh, Microsoft uh, Teams, uh, and um, I really appreciate your attention. And hope to see you again on my YouTube channel as well as my blog, SharePointMaven.com. Thank you very much. Have a great rest of the day.